What's going on guys? Got another comic book haul video for you. Uh, got a few stacks of books here uh, from Black Friday sales and from a uh, little convention here in Louisville that was happened yesterday and a couple eBay purchases and some half price book stuff. So we'll go ahead and get started here with one of the eBay purchases here. This is it was listed as the artist proof for Vampy 12, this hollow foil cover. So it's like super shiny. This is the uh, the Stephen Platt cover, and this is the Warren Lau cover. I think that's who the artist is, yeah. Uh, what does it say? I don't know. Um, I'm not sure if this is an actual artist proof or not, but it was really cool. I've never seen anything like this before. I've got this hollow, the hollow foil version of Vampy 12, the... Uh, the Stephen Platt cover, and I don't have the regular one, so uh, like I said, this was just something really unique that I saw on there when I was searching for Stephen Platt stuff, and uh, it was listed as the artist proof. There's, it's just this one sheet, two covers, looks like uncut, nothing on the back or anything. I was doing a little bit of research, and apparently the artist proof sometimes say like artist or AP on there, but I couldn't find anything to that indication on here unfortunately so I'm not sure if that's what this is there's some you can see kind of the uh, the printer marks up there and stuff so I don't know if this is just like an uncut sheet from the covers or if it's an actual artist proof or not but still something really cool so I grabbed that it was listed for 70 bucks I think but I made an offer of 50 and the guy accepted it so that's pretty cool the um, this version of it of the comic, just the comic usually goes for about 50, so I wasn't um, too upset about that. Now I just gotta figure out a way to display it. Uh, next, got some books from Half Price. Books here, got a Guardians of the Galaxy 59, just working on this uh, Marvel run, pretty close to finishing it off there. And then I got a couple of Animaniacs books, got number 19, and what's this one? This one's 15, the good feathers on there, so love the Animaniac stuff. Just working on that run too. And then the last two pickups from Half Price were a couple issues of this hard boiled book. This is a oversized book, magazine size book. I got number one and number three. I'd never heard of this before. I saw the uh, uh, West Coast Avenger guy, he was talking about him as an example of early, um, what do you call it, the Blade Runner stuff. The um, Jeez, the cyberpunk stuff, like Ghost in the Shell and everything. So I'd never heard of it. It was written by Frank uh, Miller and drawn by Jeff Darrow. So I read the first issue. It was really cool. Um, so I'll pick these up. I think maybe this was a five-issue run. I'm not sure. Um, and these were each five dollars a piece, which is, well, I guess, cover price on number three was six bucks, and cover price on number one was five bucks. So it's pretty cool. Alright, so the other two eBay pickups I got were some Ninja Turtle books, some variants from New York Comic Con this year. This first one is an Esquivo variant, that's the artist's name. This was a Whatnot UK United Kingdom exclusive, I think. I just like the cover on this one. I thought it was, it's a reprint of the IDW number one. I thought this was one of the variants for number one when it first came out, like in 2014 or 2015 or whatever, but... It was actually one they just did this year for um, New York Comic Con. I don't really like buying those, the reprints of the books that are like four or five years old. I just feel kind of weird about it, but uh, the art was cool and it was only 10 bucks, so why not? And the reason I actually bought it was because the same seller was selling this, which is my now probably my favorite uh, Street Fighter Ninja Turtles um, cover. The one I, the retailer incentive I got with uh, Ryu teaching um, one of the Ninja Turtles how to do the Hidoken is cool, but this is an homage to the uh, Street Fighter 2 Super Nintendo box art, which I played the heck out of when I was a kid. It's got uh, Michelangelo there instead of Blanca flying at Chun Li, so I thought that was really cool. Picked that one up for, uh, I think this was like 15 bucks as well with shipping and everything. And this is the uh, Ninja Turtles Street Fighter number four. It's a Rose Besh cover. Again, it was a New York City Comic Con exclusive this year, but just a really fun book. I was really happy to have that. Been enjoying these covers for the Ninja Turtles and Street Fighter a lot, so 
they keep making fun covers, I'll keep buying them. So let's see, that was all the eBay purchases. And we'll start, I'll show the more Ninja Turtles, but goodness, these are some pickups from that local Comic-Con we had here in Louisville yesterday. It's a pretty lame Comic-Con, it was mostly anime and manga stuff and toys. There was like two booths with comic books, so I got a few things from each one. Uh, I got this Ninja Turtles, this is number 30 from the initial run, the initial Mirage run, and number 32. Each of those were five bucks each. The guy gave them to me for four bucks each because I didn't have uh, exact change. So uh, all I had was eight dollars. So I felt kind of bad, but <clears throat> I didn't even think to just buy one of them for five dollars. I just said, I'll give you eight for two of them. And he said, okay. So that was fine. And then these other books were some dollar books that I grabbed at the other comic book vendor. Uh, City of Heroes, number one. Just grab this one because it's a cool George Perez cover. And it's uh, early David Nakayama art on the interior. Then I got a fun crossover book here. This is Wetworks Vampirella number one. And Fighting American number one. It's a cool Liefeld cover. And I have this one, but this is the uh, gold foil trade dress. I hadn't seen that one before, so I grabbed that one for a buck. And then probably my favorite book that I found was this Golden Adventures of Brett Hull. It's a promo McDonald's comic book. It's number three of three, so I'm definitely going to keep my eyes open for the other two. It's about uh, the hockey player Brett Hull. He was a popular player in the 90s um, when I was growing up. So I do not remember these comics. I don't know if they were a... Uh, he played in most of his career in St. Louis, so I don't know if they were a St. Louis thing, like a local promotion, or... Uh, regional maybe because it played in Dallas and then Detroit as well so uh, and I think this one was from 19 what was the year on this 94 so he's still at the blues at that time so uh, just really cool fun stuff I like the promo comics especially when they're hockey so can't go wrong with that all right this next stack of books here is from a shop that I went to on Black Friday they were uh, clobber and comics in Shepherdsville they have a store in E-Town, Kentucky as well, but this is the first time I'd gone to the one in Shepherdsville. So uh, uh, all their back issues were significantly significantly discounted, and they had a bunch of dollar books, dollar bins uh, that I went through. That's where I got uh, all this stuff except for this uh, magazine. This one was 4 bucks. It's a comic book artist number 22. Just grabbed this one because of the cool Bruce Tim cover. It's just doing a, a drawing of... The Magnus Robot Fighter, uh, number one, kind of an homage to that, so really cool uh, Bruce Tim art on there, so happy to find that, and it's, the magazine's all about the, the old gold key comics, so some pretty fun information in there as well, and then the rest of these were a dollar, so I got Zombie War number two, this is the um, Kevin Eastman miniseries that started with Fantico, I think, and then they either reprinted it or did an additional one for IDW. Uh, this is the Kevin Eastman cover. I didn't have that one yet, so I grabbed that. Another fun crossover book. So this one, another one was Wetworks Vampirella. This is Vampirella Wetworks. And I'm not sure who the cover did on that is, but it's not George Perez, but I do like the crossover stuff, so I was happy to find that. Then I got a Solo X Mutants number five. This early Ron Lim art on the inside and uh, early Jim Valentino art on the outside, so that was cool. Got this RV9, just really like the cover, and I read, I uh, showed I think number three in my last video. I think it's a six issue mini series. I picked up the first issue preview from Comic Book World here in Louisville about a year ago, I think. It was only six pages, and this is the the full thirty page volume for 30 page issue for number one so I was happy to grab that and I got some more Stephen Platt goodness here this is profit number one so this year was the 30th anniversary or last year was the 30th anniversary of image Let's see up there in the, the top there 1992 so this must have come out last year in 2022 they did a whole bunch of um, different versions of profit number one I think the guts of this is the original profit number one uh, Liefeld did the original cover, of course, him and Dan Panosian, I think, uh, but a bunch of people did covers to celebrate the 30th anniversary, and Stephen Platt did the interior art on number one, I believe, so this is cool, him doing a cover, 
of that version. So I was happy to grab that. Got some more early Jim Valentino stuff. This is Normal Man number one. Just really like his uh, early art style. It's much more cartoony than the stuff he did later on with Shadowhawk and Guardians of the Galaxy, but still enjoy it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got a cool painted cover by Mike Akimoto here. It's Lost in Space number one. I can't remember if this is a wraparound or not, so I'll show you if it is. Pop it open here. Yeah, it's not a wraparound. It's like that Magnus, that comic book artist thing. It's just the same art on the back. With some crazy tentacles going on, so who knows? <laughs> I uh, got some uh, more X-Mutant stuff. This is, let's see, X-Mutants number five from the Eternity imprint. Got this one because it's, I believe it's Ron Lim interior, and then that's a Rob Liefeld cover. You can see his signature down there if it'll focus. There we go. Liefeld 80, what does it say, 83, 85 maybe? So it's a weird looking cover. It's a shrunken guy looking on a giant woman. Not sure what that's about. But for a buck, why not? And there's another early Rob Liefeld cover from the uh, X-Mutant series. So it's really cool that him and Ron Lim, and I didn't know Jim Valentino did uh, some of the artwork as well, so that was a, a happy uh, find that I didn't know about. I'd seen this cover before, but um, not this one. So fun to find stuff that you don't know about. Uh, with your favorite artists. This is Esper's number two. I believe this is volume two. This is just early Greg Horn stuff. You can see his signature. Not quite. Now it's just that G and the H, so he was still spelling out his last name back then. So I guess he doesn't have time for that now, but uh, he does the interiors on this as well, and it's uh, black and white on the inside, so that's kind of cool. And then more early Greg Horn stuff. This is Devastator number one. So that was cool. And this was really cool. It's a uh, Derby City Comic Con program from, I think, the first year of Derby City Comic Con. It was a local convention we used to have here in Louisville. Yeah, from 2011. I think I went to the one in 2012. That was the first one I had went to. They don't have it anymore, unfortunately. I don't last about four or five years, I think. But this is a program from the first one. Uh, I couldn't find who the artist was. There's no credit on the inside. Uh, that kind of reminded me of Frank Cho, but I don't think that's him, but still pretty cool. Got some early Adam Hughes stuff here with Chassis number one. I just grabbed that because it was cheap. Got some Jim Lee goodness here in this codename Knockout number 14. The, uh, the first few issues of this Joe Chiodo did the covers on, so I grabbed those when I see them. And I didn't know Jim Lee had done a cover on it. I think this might have been the only time that he drew a cover on this one. And then J.G. Uh, Jones did the covers for a lot of them as well. Those are those are really cool. Um, but I'm going to try to get all the Joe Chiodo and then if Jim Lee has any more, I'll definitely grab those as well. Got a cool uh, Michael Turner cover here. It's Battlestar Galactica number one with uh, six on there. So that was pretty cool. I didn't know that uh, Michael Turner did any work on Battlestar Galactica, so really loved that show. Uh, I was just thinking today, I think it's been almost, I think it came out in 2004, 2005, so it's been almost 20 years since that came out, which is crazy, but uh, I'd never seen this before, so grabbed it for a buck, and then I like my uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles parodies, so I had to grab the Adolescent Radioactive Black Belt Hamsters, The Lost Treasures from Parody Press, and a couple more cartoon books here. Ren and Stimpy Show Special, Summer Jobs. I think it's Ren and Stimpy Show Special 2, colon, Summer Jobs. And then, yep, yeah, it's a newsstand too, so that's pretty cool. And then, Pinky and the Brain, Mission Impinkable. This is Pinky and the Brain number 8. Oh, this was one of the ones from, I grabbed, I'll grab these from Half Price, so these were out of order, sorry. Um, I got these with the Animaniacs books, I guess. Um... Yeah, the uh, Mission Impossible homage, so that's fun. And then the last two books I grabbed from Clobber and Comics were a couple issues of this Miss Marvel uh, run that I'm working on. Again, uh, let's see, those, that's a Grey Horn cover. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Oh, I was wrong. See, he is, he spells out his name now. I'm sorry. I think when he actually signs, that's what I'm thinking of, when he actually signs his name 
on stuff like I see it on his Instagram and stuff he just does the big G and the H um, but yeah obviously he puts his full name on it I'm an idiot so <laughs> yeah, that was number what was that 30 and then this is number 29 so some cool Greg Horn covers on those all right and then the last stack here is from Destination Comics here in Louisville it's another store that was having a Black Friday sale so all their back issues were like 75% off or something and most of their back issues are priced at whatever cover price it is um, so if there were four bucks I mean I don't do the math it was like I don't know, two bucks or something they were cheap so <laughs> I got a big stack so I got the wild storm number five this is the Jim Lee cover uh, like I said I didn't know about the codename knockout Jim Lee cover I knew he did all the he did the B covers on I think the first six or ten issues of the Wild Storm, so I'm trying to grab all those. So that was number five, and that was number six. He did the cover on that. And the Ninja Turtles book here, Ninja Turtles Universe cover A. This is number fifteen. Just grab this one because it's a cool Freddie Williams cover. It's a cool Karai, uh, looking pretty badass on there. So can't go wrong with that. Then another. This is a more recent Ninja Turtles. Um, book. This is the uh, one shot Splintered Fate. I didn't read this one yet, but this came out pretty recently, um, but I didn't buy it new, so I picked it one up for a buck. And then got some of the Ninja Turtles Adventures books. Got number 38 in newsstand. Got number 35. Pretty cool. And number 10. So, yeah. Slowly chipping away at this. I think this ran about 50 or 60 issues. And I know those hard, those uh, later issues are definitely harder to find. So it's happy to uh, find some of these earlier issues. And then uh, was it 35 and 38? They're kind of up there, but not not quite as hard to find. Got a, another Street Fighter Cross GI Joe book. Just a cool M Bison cover. Just really enjoy these crossover books with these IPs that I loved as a kid. So, I was happy to find that one. And let's see. Got a Frank Cho book here. This is Skyborn. This is number two. He did the, he wrote this and did all the interior art as well. So, that's pretty cool. It looks like it was a five issue miniseries. I think I've got number one. And um, I'm going to definitely try to piece all these, piece this whole series together. Because I like, really like it when I can find him doing the interior stuff. Because he basically only does cover work now. Got a Silver Surfer book from Volume 3 that I'm trying to finish out. Got number 122. And picked up a couple of these uh, Renato Jones books that I didn't have. This is a series by Kari Andrews that I really like. So this is Season 2, Freelancer number 4, number 3, and number 2. So I was happy to find those. And then found a big chunk of the Lola XO books. I'm trying to get all those together, and they are there are a ton of different covers for each one. And one thing I just found out, uh, so this is Lola XO XO Wasteland Madam number one. That's a Saya Oum cover, and again she does all the interior art on this as well. So it's really beautiful pencil work, and really happy when I can find one of my favorite artists doing the interior art on new books, well newish I guess. Um, so, this is XOXO number 6. This is not Saya Ohm cover, but still a cool cover. So, one thing that I just found out was they have, I thought Lola XOXO was the only series, but there's different volumes. So, if you see up there, it says volume 2, which I did not know, so I had started keeping track of these, and now I'm not sure which ones I have, because that was... <laughs> because I didn't know there was a delineation between Volume 1, Volume 2, and maybe Volume 3 for Lola XOXO. So I'm going to be buying uh, multiple copies of these, but um, I definitely didn't have any of these, so I uh, can't go wrong. So there's number 4, Cover D, that is a Siome cover. It's really cool. This is 4, let's see, that's 4A, yeah, from Volume 2. So 2017, so not too long ago. Then I found some uh, incentive variants that I think were only available on uh, her website, maybe. 
or I don't know if they were, they might have been available to, to retailers and stuff if you ordered a certain amount, I'm not sure, but these are still available, available on her website, but she sells them for more than nine bucks, but I mean, this was 75% off, so, I don't know, two or three bucks, so that was cool, looks like a little fashion magazine cover there, and then there's another one, really cool, I do like the, and there's the last one, that's one of those, I like the, uh, the action scenes more, like that, but I'll grab all these incentives and stuff when I can find them for cheap, because a bit of a completionist, so gotta have them all, right? And then that one's number three, and this one is number one in volume, yeah, that's volume three, so I'm not sure exactly how many volumes there were, at least three, I guess, right? And let's see, volume two, yeah. So just really fun covers. Uh, really, really happy to find a big stack of those books. And then finishing off here, got Kingdom Come number one. It's the classic uh, Alex Ross story. And, you know, this is late 90s, early 2000s. Just a really cool Elseworlds story um, about all the DC superheroes have aged up. And just got old Superman and old Batman uh, coming back to fight. Uh, what was that guy's name? I can't remember, but story's really cool. Alex Ross does the interior art on all these, the whole miniseries, so definitely check it out if you haven't. And let's see, got Deathstroke Terminator number 10. This is the, I think this is the first appearance of the new Vigilante. It's got a cool Mike Zek cover. Got another crossover book here, Darkness and Wolverine number one. Just really cool. No, I thought it was Mark Silvestri, but uh, I can't tell who the artist is, but just a fun little Top Cow Marvel Joint. Last two here, we've got Borderlands number four. This is a really fun uh, video game from uh, 10, 15 years ago now <laughs> uh, that I played. The art style in the game was really cool. It was like a cell shaded art style, uh, but it was a first person shooter that you could play um, it was on teams and stuff. So it was a lot of fun. And um, the books are pretty hard to find, I think. So this is my first first one of those, and it's the sub cover, so probably even a little harder to find, so I was happy to find that. And then last book, we started with the Stephen Platt goodness, we'll end with the Stephen Platt goodness. This Blood Strike number 16, super extreme Stephen Platt goodness from the 90s, which I love and can never get enough of, so I had to grab it. Alright guys, uh, that's going to do it. Hope you guys found some good deals on Black Friday, or... Uh, just had a good holiday, and I uh, will see you soon.